Excellent. Welcome, everyone. Oh, here we are, team. We're back. Freezing cold Woo! Friday live at the Friday. And we got the fantastic, the wonderful Tristan Tristo with, with us today. Tristo, how it's are you? It's quite guys. It's not really cold. Good to see you. Oh, oh turn it up. Oh, no, you're from South Australia, you nutcase. I think he just said he's starting to get acclimatised, though. Yeah. He's starting yeah. to get P- colder. Public image. Well, Murray six Redman, years, there you go, Six bro. years it's well, taken, but... You, yeah. Well, Tristo and I swim twice a week at six o'clock at night, right? Is so, it a heater pool? <laughs> oh, really? In wetsuits. You're crazy. In wetsuits. But there's a Brazilian lad that Tristo works with, no wetsuit, yeah. and does breaststroke, so he's swimming slow. Slow. Wow. Do- doesn't warm up. Oh, he's a machine, though. Straight. That's crazy. He just keeps L- going. Loves it too, smiles oh, when he gets out. Oh, my gosh. I yeah. reckon. And he must have. Does he, does he know about shrinkage? Uh, I assume so. <laughs> He's always bringing stuff like this up. Well, just shrinkage of the nipples? No, no nipples, nipples get bigger more than this Oh, I can you, Don't you know about shrinkage? I do know about okay. shrinkage. Let's You're get just carry You're away. away. You're a nurse. You know all about shrinkage. Yes, it's, away. it's four o'clock in the afternoon. I know. I know. <laughs> Shannon and Glenn. Welcome, Murray. Shannon. Oh, we'll do it backwards again. Murray, Shannon, Glenn. No. So, yes, we, Ros goes down, I'll work up or the other way around. Now. Ros baby. More disruption. We've done disruption, disruption all these We time. did. Disruption in leadership last week, which was very well received. Was it? Yeah, oh, some actually, really great feedback. Well, did you? Yeah, lots of lessons. What was it like? Talking through it. Yeah, feedback. just uh, just a lot of people, I think, who are interested in that kind of thing, like me, who, um, you know, we were talking oh, about yes, mission, vision, values, values, and all of that sort of and thing. And we're going to do your values and too. Yeah, yeah, we oh, are, that. which I was supposed to do today, but I sponsored the Bits Ladies Golf Open and was running late because I was down there doing the presentation, mm-hmm. so Go sorry on, about that. that just, was don't, supposed to be don't early. Don't let it happen again. No, we'll get it done <laughs> next week. I've That's waited right. this long. Oh, no. But it was good. I think a lot of people, um, uh, even the disruption in relationships and disruption in your life that we've been talking mm. about, it, it's brought a lot of pe- to a lot of people's attention, That's the disruption right. they've got. And I know I messaged you last week and oh, I said, I you've actually made me realise I was more managing yeah. my business than leading. That's and right. Yeah, hey, I learned a lot Are you allowed to tell us about that there? Yeah, that, let, let, you about that story you shared with me? Or are you I can't keep remember that what it was. No. I'll have a look I'll at my try messages. To speak in code later. Hi, Sorry, Tristan, hi, we do get a bit close and rub against Yeah, we are because we've got big um, gap. We're normally like now, this. <laughs> now, hold on, hold on. Donna Ellis, thanks for joining us. Oh, what we're going to do, and I know Donna offers to help with this. Oh, Murray's on a bus travelling to Caratha to fly oh, I know. Out in the middle of BFN, if anyone knows where BFN but, is. But, yeah, <laughs> nowhere. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Now, quickly, Ross, just on that, Donna offered to help last week too. So um, we yeah, might even did. get Donna involved. And thanks for the offer, Donna. What we're going to do is we're actually, Ros has kindly allowed us to video. We're going to do a three-part series. We are. On how to, how to oh, create. Gosh. Not only how to create, but how to live values in the business. So Ros and I will do, the, we're going to do three hours, yes. one hour next week, and then an hour probably the week after with your team. And then an hour. Well, you can do that time. without me because I'm going away. That's that right. Week, so. We're going to have to be. We'll do it with I've your got team. One on week that of work week. left. We'll do it with your team, though. So you can. Three video session, Raw's team, and then Perfect. how did it work? It'll all be sorted when I time. get back to work. That's right. And so that'll be good because you'll have been away. Because sign of good leader is we have the team left and right. And they're right, going right? to have my back completely. So. They are. Oh, of course they will. Yes. Troy and Kelvin. Kelvin. And Troy Brian. Brian Smart usually sits over there. He is. Yeah, he's mate. So looking at you from a distance this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Tristo, disruption. How old's Oscar? Uh, coming on. Actually, just ticked over seven months. Just ticked over seven months. Wow. Good okay. New baby in the house. New baby. Speaking of disruption. Is that disruptive? Uh, transformative. I think would be the word. I <laughs> love that word. But, um, I don't really remember what luck was like well, beforehand. Really? Seven I feel months. like I mean if you um if you count the number of sleeps that I've had as in I've had four different sleeps uh, last night. Right. Um, oh, I've probably yeah. had you know, six different years of, mm. of life since he was born, so it's been great. So how long were you and your wife wife partner yeah, wife together girl. before baby came along? Uh so we met as soon as I came to Gladstone, so we were together for just under six years or five and a half years beforehand, and we were married for about two and a half. Mm. And then baby comes along. Yeah. Mm. And how was old Oscar? Seven months. Seven. Was Oscar okay. playing? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. We, um, we decided we wanted to start a family, and uh, did it happen quick? 
Well, I don't really know what the grand scheme of things is in that regard, but uh, no, it was you just, like the practice thing. So we talked about the practice, practice before, thing. yeah. Oh, like I just like to know how long. I get it, Zach. Yes, I just like to know how long it took, blokes, because I brought I I spy. Because we were yeah. like the next month, yeah. at both times. No, so super smart. It, it, it's pretty funny. So I mean, you, you joke about it and you say, "Gee, I hope it takes as long as it does." But the <laughs> the, the, the truth is that for the um, for the future mum, uh, yeah. wondering whether it's ever going to happen, yeah. and you know, do, go, going going through the monthly cycle uh, of yes. um, you know, gee, I really and building yourself up. Gee, yeah. I hope that you know, it doesn't happen. It's it's pretty oh. hard to actually watch your partner. Um, yeah. That's great when mild you, male point of view because remember nice. I said I tried for 12 months with Brendan yeah, yeah. and every month you get your period and you feel like you're a failure and you feel like everyone around you is getting pregnant and it is a really stressful time. Yeah. And obviously for your partner to watch that and you're, all, you're both disappointed every month. Isn't that emotionally intelligent? Very oh, emotionally she's intelligent. She's yeah, yeah especially to recognise that she went through yeah, that. Absolutely. So. I didn't notice that at all. Well, Bye, Nancy. That's because you were a one-shot boy. <laughs> And I got the. He advice. never had to worry about it, and <laughs> that's why he he brags about it. I got the advice brags from the boiler maker, the boiler on side. Oh yeah, let's not yeah. talk about that again because <laughs> rewatch our previous videos if you want to know what that's the boiler right. makers. Absolutely, Robbie, I, Robbie, I do. Well, always almost do. always high quality life advice. High quality. Yeah. It's like the taxi driver. Yeah. Or the Uber driver. So disruption. Do mm. you with your sleep interruptions with the new baby in the house? Um, is is the oh, Oscar bottle fed or breastfed? Uh, so just in the process of being weaned, so he's been breastfed, but um, he's probably been on a mix since he was about seven or eight weeks. So have you you've been getting up to help with feeds in the night? Because I find that's one of the hardest things. There's no, I reckon there's no tiredness in the world like like the tiredness you feel as a new parent, with because that you just, just you, you cannot describe. Especially when you, this guy's got a really busy job. Crying baby in the middle of the night and you love them, but mm. it's just like, oh, my God, I'm going to sleep again. Oh, That's okay. the feeling that you have. Shut the F up, John. <laughs> How did you find that with getting up for work every day? And Yeah, so, I mean, I'm I'm extremely fortunate. Nicole does a fantastic job, and uh, she certainly does the lion's share of that, which I'm exceptionally grateful for. But the you know, rocking up to work on... Two and a half mm, hours sleep so. and those kind of things can be um, can be pretty painful because it's not fair on her for for her to have to do it every night um, and particularly once Oscar started taking bottles mm. throughout the night. Um, you know, I, the the initial the initial phase of Oscar joining us wasn't particularly easy for a, a variety of reasons. Um, and one of the one of the things that I really enjoyed was actually getting to have the time with him. You know, yeah. I'm like, oh my god, shut up! You're just driving me insane. Yeah. It's two o'clock in the morning. Don't you know what you're supposed to be doing right now? And what every parent says. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, that I've said that and more. But and thankfully, he sure. doesn't no, remember. Sure. No, they won't remember. Sure. But at the same time, you're not um, alone. Though that's yeah. what every parent feels. Oh, absolutely. Mm. But at the same time, the. It, it's you, you've got a sense of solitude, and it's just the pair of you, yeah. and so that oh, wow. that really helped with um, building a bond which didn't necessarily form as quickly as I hoped or expected it would. So. Mm. Yeah. And it is amazing that that dad thing with bottle because Brendan wouldn't breastfeed, so I tried for a little while, and then the the fact that you know, and and that's what his dad said to have that one on one time yeah. feeding when um, as a breastfed baby, obviously mm. they just with mum every time they feed yeah. until they are weaned. But um, yeah, the, it is that really yeah. special bonding time yeah. with the dad. Isn't I think yeah. the, the thing that was really um, the thing that was really interesting uh, that I look back on now is that the for the first little while I felt like I was a real failure like I as soon as Oscar was born say the first five days he went into palliative care wow. um, then he got and I got kicked out of the hospital because they allow you to have the first two nights in there and then I was sort of booted out then he was discharged and then two days later I had to go back to work and I wow. went into a, a, quite a significant project so um, I tried for the first week and I really did to do the feeds in the middle of the night, but I was working 14 plus hours a day. It just wasn't sustainable, particularly given that I had another month ahead of me of it. So I I didn't quite get that um, early connection like I hoped and I expected that I would. And then because I didn't get that, we didn't have that um, natural bond, 
he didn't respond quite as well to me as what I again hoped and expected that he would. Then you feel so rejected. then I felt then I feel rejected. Yeah, then you feel rejected. And you know, yeah. at the end of the day, like I go to work and he's still asleep, and then I come home and then he's in witching hour. Yeah. And he's being a right turd, like yeah. screaming and crying and not interested in anybody but his mum. And so I felt like I the only parts of the experience I was getting were the crappy ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, changing Either the crappy asleep nappy. Or... Yeah, <laughs> asleep yeah. or screaming. Screaming, yeah. But that uh, that time in the middle of the night was actually really special because mm. I felt like I was actually succeeding and that yeah. we were starting to connect. And it, it's great now. That's but... really great and honest of you That's to nice. mm, very... recognize that. I, I, very weird. Mm. I think, um, and you know, this isn't necessarily a criticism of anybody or any part of our. Uh, social structure, but we there's a lot of support and uh, during the pregnancy process for the mother. And when the mother's born, it's okay for the mother to have postnatal depression and they have mums groups and those kind of things. And that's really important because there's no doubt that the mums cop the, the brunt of it and yeah. they have the, a far harder time. But there, there is a gap, in my opinion, in the way we uh, approach new fathers. Oh, yeah. And looking back on it, um, sure. I was really fortunate that I had some really close friends and some family who were prepared to guide me and say, you know, it's okay to actually feel yeah. distant and what have That's you. Like, it's going to take some time. Yeah. It's a great observation but, as well yeah, to see there's that gap there. And John Cerotti would probably hear, it's hear bit, that. A it's a bit too mature for me, Tristan. It's way mature. <laughs> Sorry, it's way like grown up. <laughs> Were you a bit of a hands-on dad when they were yes. babies, really yes. little? Yeah. They got up for the feed. Yeah, and... Jules couldn't breastfeed the toads. And so I was like, I was doing the nights as well, which really sucked. And so I was so happy when Jules was breastfeeding was that. <laughs> so happy. It's <laughs> the so first thing I asked Tristan, is she on the boob? He said, yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, so that's funny. Funny. Six hours a day, you're free, right? That's right, exactly. And night time. So, so how, did, right. how did you cope with, yeah. um, I mean, obviously, you know, being an in industry, mm. um, and Anton's talked about this before, mm. when you used to go to the um, the uh, Insight Tribe with John Cerotti mm. and you took Zaki, and you said that yep. there was so much, you Man, know, mentally stuff. and, and full-on stuff that was talked oh. about and it was so emotional and then these guys would have to get Show up, up for work the next day, the next day in Same a sort of clear. Thing. So obviously lack of sleep can affect your mental state. Absolutely. Sure. How did you cope with that and did you have leaders who, you know, understood that? Yeah, so, well? so to a certain extent, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm really fortunate. My boss uh, was the only person out of... Almost everybody, like the, the most common two questions I get asked are how's Nicole and how's Oscar? Yeah. Everybody wants to know how the baby is yeah. and everyone wants to know that mum's healthy, wow. which, is, which is great. Yeah. My boss was the only person who'd say, how are you? How are you? Oh, so yeah. so yeah, he, he, wow. was, he was very aware and it was pretty clear cool, that I was, um, you know, that I was tired and he has a very good radar of my mood. So That's excellent. if I'm, you know, if I'm tired and I'm snappy or I'm grumpy or whatever, he, He's actually picks up on that really nicely. So That's I was very cool, fortunate. Man. Man. For good sure. leader. Isn't that a good, good leader? leader? And it's rubbed off on Tristo too, because Tristo's a good leader too. Mm. Try to be. Try to be. But um, I mean, more broadly Zach though. crazy stuff. Absolutely, Zach. That's crazy stuff. I remember you and I having these moments for man at like <laughs> 30 in the morning. Oh, those are the days. And Zach asked, what you'll find, I don't know, actually you might not find this, both of our boys at about 18 months sort of went downhill again like they wanted you know wake up at two o'clock in the morning oh really yeah what they thought that they should be sleeping with mum and dad i think was the message and and toby of course being quite easily influenced and convinced i just said you know just left him there and <laughs> took him about five minutes but zach of course zachy is a bit more stronger willed than toby oh zachy you're like your father i tell you and so <laughs> after about a week of this jill's got sick of it so she started bringing zach in the bed to him yeah morning. And so I'd say, baby, please, come on, what are you doing? So I'd pick him up, take him back to the cot. And, and Zach S had this thing where he'd have to grab your thumb. Yeah. And, he'd say, and when he started to talk, he'd call it fun. And he'd say, fun, fun, fun. So at 2 o'clock in the morning, he couldn't have talked at this stage, but he still wanted to grab something. So I'd be in there holding, and he'd be holding my thumb, because I wouldn't let him come into bed with us. And um, and I'd be singing to him. I'd sing to Zach. Oh, what would you sing? Because um, you come to on a summer. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's so, beautiful. Uh, a little bit of Bee Gees. So, Do you so, remember yeah. that, Zachy? I mean, wonder if when you hear old. that song, you 
can treat, treat feel some confident. Yeah, anyway. Don't know why, but for whatever reason, it just builds him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's and right. And singing's, singing's really good to you, babies. You don't even have to be good at it. Oh, I think they're just like, they're confident. <laughs> even, 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 though, even though I am, right? Oh, yeah, you would well, be. Yeah, you're amazing. <laughs> you know, present company excluded. That's what we want. In We're the all shower, talented in that regard. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Yes, we are. So, so just a have you started shower. singing to Oscar yet? Yeah, yeah, I sing to him. Oh, yes. yeah. good. Yeah. He's, no, he's got a voice though. He tried out for X Factor. Uh, yeah, X -Factor? tried out for X Factor. Yeah. Wow. Go on. Through the first round. Uh, I got through a couple of rounds. There you go. Can you sing? Oh my God, we have a star We don't know much about. Love the song. Don't remember it though. You'll have to get your dad to sing it to you again, Zach. It might I, I put do. you to sleep. <laughs> Tristan, I reckon when you give him a call at three o'clock tomorrow morning, Zach. Yeah, oh yeah. Can yeah, you go and on. Sing me yeah, that that's song. a great idea. And Mick Bruton, who's our little um, um, nephew. So hey, Mick. Julie's. I used to sing um, "You Are My Sunshine" to my. Oh kids. really? Yeah, I love that song. Oh, I tell you a song that was really resonated with. This was "Beautiful Boy." Oh, oh yeah. yeah, John yeah, Lennon. Yeah, yes. yeah. That, that is a lovely over song. Over and over and over again. Yeah, it's a lovely um, song. Now, so this bloke, something you don't know about Tristo, chess champion, chess wow. guru. One of the, we were speaking of something the other day, or Jules was. Apparently, even without even training, top 15 in Australia chess. Wow. Your mates were giving you that. No, uh, not without training. Though. No, well, the boys reckon you would be. Hell of, a, hell of a lot of hard work over a lifetime. Right. Still, that's good, though, top 15 in Australia. Yeah. Of anything. So um, is that like the Australian champions of chess? Is that a thing? Uh, yeah, so I never played an Australian Championship. It's like um, it's probably closer to tennis, okay. where you play various tournaments and then you end up qualify the for. Oh yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, my uh, my top fifteen in the world is probably a little bit like when uh, as a ranker or something became number one, despite the fact that Serena Williams won every Grand Slam. Yeah, yeah that's. It was okay. probably closer to that where I lived in above everybody else by. Uh, by doing well at hey, the tournaments. Take it for what it is. Right. Take it for what it is. Don't talk it down, Tristan. You've done well. Um, and then um, X Factor, X Factor singing. So you were born with a beautiful singing. So what voice. year was X, what what year was that? Uh, what year were the what year were the Ashes last in Australia? Uh, Two thousand and fourteen. Fourteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. No. Is that it? No, four, five so years like ago. a year after I, you I moved went here. after I went to the Ashes. So a year after you moved here, it would have been. Yeah, about that. Ish. Holy shit! Wow. Okay. Sure. That's amazing. So you actually went on TV yeah. and you made the first few rounds. Yeah, so what they don't tell you about what you see on TV, though, is that that's like round four. So you know when yeah. you see the train wrecks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the people get really upset? Yeah. The reason four. that they're really upset is because they've actually been passed through um, oh, a couple so of levels. Yeah. And so they get this kind of, oh, actually, I'm not really? too bad. Well, and why then, does he go on stage that you think your mother's told you can sing in that, and they yeah, actually made it through? That, that, is, that is not the first oh, experience you have. set up. So, so, yeah, so there's this, yeah. um, I've been told that they have uh, um, a variety of different uh, 16, 7, codes. 8, that was only three years ago, Tristan. Zach was saying we went oh. in 16, 7, 8. Nah, it, it must, must have been before, before then. That. Yeah, yeah, must sure. have been the 14. one. Must have been fourteen. Yeah, then. It yeah. was the one where uh, all the Aussies decided to grow moustaches, oh, and Mitch, Dob Mitch was, Johnson looked like a weapon and just that wasn't that the one. That was the one before. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, I remember uh, Mitch Johnson rolling out and so, thinking that uh, Aussies were untouxable if they were wearing masks. X Factor is different to the what you don't get a you don't get a. Do you get a mentor? Uh, I didn't get that far, okay. but um, I don't know. No, I don't. I don't. I think the think boys is the mentor. The yeah, but they don't. They don't coach you in the same way right. um, for voice, X Factor as what they do with the voice. Where part of the show is the talent development behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, okay. And a, cle well, and a clever man too. Yeah, very very intelligent. So what's your what's your trade? What do you, uh, what I'm, is a, your... I'm a chemical engineer. Oh, yeah, that's there you go. Yeah. Extremely <laughs> intelligent. No trades, so, well, there's only trades. Dodgy one. one. I was going to say. Ass nurses and electricians. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Awesome. So um. Let's, can we talk work, mate? Can we yeah. talk leadership and culture? Absolutely. Mark, Mark Cuthall, Cuthall, how are you, bro? Mark's just been away to something. What Has he? That? What he was in the hot seat about a month ago, teacher. He was, yeah, he was mm, here, sitting right here. Like so, Mark, he's a good lad. Was it the, what did you go to? State of Origin, Mark? Oh, that's where he was at the yeah. Origin. Yeah, yeah, I saw photos. How good was the Origin? Oh, my own. God, go Queenslander. Yeah. There's a Maroon jersey over there. Queenslander. Uh, what a great yeah. game. Yeah. You know, I seriously. I think we should have won by me. Oh, I know. We should have won by 20 or 20. Yeah, we should have. Oh, the nice two tries that were disallowed. Mm. and 
I the stealing, the, okay. the tackling, for, you know, chasing and tackling before oh, the Queensland yeah. guys so picked up the that ball. Was a, it was a professional foul. That yeah, was a it should penalty have been try. penalty try, Absolutely. which it should have been 58 to 2. Yeah. <laughs> It's not particularly difficult to hold on to the ball as you cross the line either. So I reckon, no, no. Uh, I reckon Gagai might, yeah, despite yeah. the fact that he did some late heroics, might, uh, yeah. might do a little bit better yeah. this time. That's it. That's it. Did you see the footage today? They got the New South Wales guy that got his shoe ripped off and played yeah. for five minutes without. Yeah. I didn't see that in the that's game. That's hilarious. No. Well, well, one of the Queenslanders threw it over yeah. the sideline. I didn't even yeah. see that in the game until. Yeah. 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 No, I just saw the video and I was like, oh, that is. That's naughty. It's not. It's not Lapuate. Oh, bad, yeah. bad, but <laughs> I think it was Boyd Cordner too, wasn't it? Wasn't it their captain? No, yeah, the captain? I think, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. All righty. So we're going, to, we're going to talk culture today, which is, um, and Tristo, what you don't know, Ros, he's a senior manager out at Orica, so he reports the GM, so he's right up there. Okay. Um, so you so, very much in a position of leadership. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. How big's your team, by the way? Uh, all up, I've got 86. 86. That's enough. What is to... How old are you? Like 67 or something? You've done a lot yeah, in your life. Yeah, that's about 25. Yeah. Wow. 32? 15 years. That's amazing. 14. How long did you have to go to uni to be a chemical engineer? I was in five years. Okay. I could have... Uh, could have done it a little bit quicker if maybe I spent a little bit of less time at the bar and more <laughs> time like in classes early on. Oh, I okay. I wasn't studying. That's were you a drunken lad when you were young? Oh, my nursing days were pretty full on. Yeah, Rocky, Rocky was rocking back then. Was it Camden? Yeah. What was it? Flamingos back then? Oh, yeah. Flamingos. Flamingos. Oh, yeah. Was it? Yeah. Oh, shit. And then the same people that owned Flamingos opened Pinocchio's oh, around the corner. Yeah. So I met right. Jimmy Barnes there. Did you? Pretty, right. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. So, uh, so chemical engineer. Hello. And th- are you 32 or 33 this year? Uh, no, 33 next year. 30, so 30, you're 32 yeah. this year. Right, so we've got 15 years between us here and Tristo. That's time. pretty awesome. Yeah. So you manage 87, you've got 87. Yeah, I've got, I've got a handful of superintendents. Okay. Um, so culture. What's culture mean to you, bro, as a leader? Um, I think there's a, there's a couple of ways you can look at it, and one of them is the probably a reasonable definition is the underlying um, – underlying things that determine whether or not people do things out of desire, out of need. And the you, know, you can have procedures and a whole bunch of uh, really regimented and disciplined pieces, but the, the thing that underpins the way people act and the way people perceive each other, I think, is what culture is. Yeah. And it's the easiest thing in the world to stuff up, and it's the hardest thing to get right. right. Yeah, right. That's great. Isn't it well said? Yes. And the way we describe it from a consultant perspective is the way we do things here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's just the sort of the summarised version. Yeah. Um, so you said it's hard to build. It's easy to lose because it, 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 like, it does. And I want to ask you about coaching a sec too with a small business. Yeah. Because I want you to share Very that. hard. Yeah. Small teams, very hard. Well, yes or no? I think it's easier in a small team than with 86 or 87. Yeah, but I think there's the culture, which might be a bit easier, but the um, the leadership and management, I think, is more difficult yeah. in a small team because yeah, yeah. you build friendships, close yeah. friendships. If you've got 87 it's people a, you know, around off-ish. you. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. It is, become like there a are, family. It has its own challenges. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the management side, I suppose, and leadership mm. side. But I'm learning that as I go. Obviously, mm. you never get it right all the time. Never. Right. But um, off long I still think culture culture is a big thing in any team. Oh, but, yeah, it's very. I think it's really obvious in a small team. That's right. And you, you know the values proposition. Actually, let's ask Tristan about values proposition. So we're going to do values and values. Yeah, I need to. How important is values to culture? I think you can have culture without necessarily having values, but I don't think uh, you can be as clear about what you would like your culture to look like if you don't have it. So, um, you know, you, if, you, if you watch the AFL, I, I assume it's the same in NRL, but I just don't watch enough of it. But right. after a game, the, um, the new players and what have you, they'll throw the, um, the Gatorade or the Powerade yeah, all around the room. And... I remember a few years ago, and I'm a Richmond fan, and one of the, uh, a leader who I uh, really aspire to is the captain of the 
Aboriginal Football Club. Not necessarily because he's the world's best leader, although I think he's pretty good. But he was able to change. And there was a um, there was some footage that came out a couple of years ago when he had taken this step, where after the game and after the um, after everyone had left, he was walking around and he was picking up all of the rubbish and he was cleaning up mess. Right? So this is a guy who's earning three quarters of a million dollars, captain of ultimately the Premiership side, and I don't think that was written anywhere. But the th- there's no doubt that what that did was it set a cultural expectation around who we are, we're, we're sportsmen, yeah, we're role models, and we are going to uphold a standard that we would expect of anybody else. Yes. Yeah. But I don't, I'm, I'm fairly certain that there's nowhere written in the Richmond Club values that will we will clean up. the change rooms. Can I tell you something? The All Blacks? Same thing. Same yeah. thing. Didn't, um, I can't remember the name of the captain, yeah. didn't he rip everyone off the bus at, at a World Cup? Probably. He said, wow, yeah. Richie McCaw. Richie McCaw, yeah, ripped everyone off the bus. And he said, he said walked them back in. So and he said, we've just won the World Cup, and this is the way you're going to act. Wow, wow. Yeah. well done. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then they went and cleaned up the room. There's an amazing leader. Oh, absolutely. Like, truly authentic. Absolutely. And the jersey comes with that. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you read the book, so there's been some great books written, they're actually leadership manuals about the All Blacks. Just, yeah. And it's nothing to do with um, anything other than how they conduct themselves. Because that's what values are, how, you, how your behaviour demonstrates what you believe and what you feel. And like what you said before, Tristo, that whole, um, do we do it because we're committed to it or do we do it because there's a procedure that says we have to? That is so important um, when it comes to culture. I think and I, the, sorry, sorry, no, I was just going to say, I think that also, um, I think that, you know, the values and the culture, mm. um, thinking about some of the really well-known famous teams mm. or groups that you can think of that have mm. have stepped over the boundary and gone outside their values yes. and, you know, the Australian cricket team, like the effect that what, you know, the captain did and, and with yeah. the ball tampering and all of that and the effect that actually had on cricket fans all across the world and especially mm. Australia. I know myself, I've always been a massive cricket yeah. fan. That actually did something to me that's as far right. as seeing that Broke that's so and, and it was more it was more that I knew that they had actually gone against what their values are. You that's know, you, we don't do that. We don't cheat, you know, exactly. we're Australia, they violated you know, our values, yeah. not just theirs. And I think the higher you hold someone in a sting, like Steve that's Smith right. I've always looked up to and that's that right. was just it was heartbreaking from a mother's point of view. Yeah. I was feeling for his parents. Oh, I was thinking, yes. why did you make a stupid decision? So yeah, no, the, going was. against the values of it's and then, crazy. you know, having uh, that brilliant football game we had up here last year where yeah. um, the Titans played Manly and, yeah. and then Manly played up after in the game Gladstone, in Gladstone, Gladstone. and yeah. you know that obviously went against the team yeah. values and right. I think um, having those values sets that standard of I'm not really it. interesting just hold on a sec team Nancy Catherine Merritt Nancy Davison Gillian Burke Matthew, Matthew Nancy Merritt, Merritt. Yeah. Vanessa Wood, hello hey guys, everyone. Thanks welcome. for joining us. We have a special us. guest Sarah. this afternoon we have, Tristan. Oh, for anyone that's just joined Tristan Stevens a gun triathlete too. Wow. Now, I'm, 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 I haven't done on one for what, like four years, on right? The come but, back. You know, once a triathlete, always a triathlete. That's right. Yeah, so they we'll, say, can't we'll, take it out of them. Yeah, that's right. And we'll be in the gym at 4.30 tomorrow oh, morning. Doing I saw you a little yeah. Yeah. tomorrow afternoon, yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a bit cold little. yesterday, it was. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Shrinkage. Oh. We, I don't know how you do it. You don't swim yeah. at that hour of the morning, though. Oh, no. You couldn't swim. Couldn't. The pool does not at 5.30 a.m. We don't. We're in the gym. At Isn't there a heated yeah. pool at our town yeah. pool? It's only 25 yeah. metres. Under cover so. one. Oh, it's okay. a bit too hot. We'll just, just turn around hot. and go back. That's 50 metres. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Push, I know. push off. Get to the yeah. other end. Yeah. Push off. And it is. You just feel like you're turning the whole yeah. time. So yeah. I imagine outside. that would be. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> with, both of those, with both of those examples that you just pulled out, one of the things that, and particularly with the, the Australian cricket scene, one which I'm more familiar with, the... It, it really spoke to me about the importance of getting the um, the consistency through the leadership ranks because the Australian cricket team has had this, and you know Australians like to put ourselves on a pedestal when it comes to the oh, integrity of our sport. Yes. Yes. We um, can never do wrong. Yeah. We're so shocked if something yeah. happens. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know Lance Armstrong, dirty oh. drug cheat. Uh, I don't know if you want to oh, yeah. pay much attention oh, to our yeah. um, historical cyclists because they're probably not that much better. But when Steve Smith, I mean, he just chose to look the other way. Yeah, and, that's right. He didn't and, actually participate. You know, so it wasn't him who came up with, but as a leader, he walked past, he heard it, and he went, 
Okay. Do what you, want. Mm, you know, like... I, see, I, I think like that's worse it than is. the, the team, teammates doing it is what, when a leader turns a blind eye. And I'm going to take that one step forward and ask Tristo the question, if it's okay for the captain to do it, what does that say? Well, the, the, the standard that you walk past, the standard you accept. Thank I mean, you. That's, yeah, that's great. It's, yeah, it's as simple it. as that when it comes to leadership. Yes, right. I'm hoping that I'll be able to apply that in terms of parenting as well. Mm. But the it's it's really simple that if you choose to ignore something, Correct. you are accepting it. Silence is tacit acceptance. That's right. Exactly. And even let's take it one step further, though, Tristo. The re, what gave Steve Smith the permission in his heart and his head to walk past that not saying anything? What gave him that permission? Do you think? Uh, I mean, I don't know, and I also not, I also don't want to be. I don't want to be too critical of the man because he's a man in his 20s who has been given this wonderful opportunity, but but equal burden, right? So so if I was to take a look at, and if I was to be critical of people, I'd be critical of people like James Sutherland who... who This is where I want to go with this. Who actually set up a young, high potential... Mm from all appearances until this mm. moment, man of incredible integrity, Absolutely. genuine values, Absolutely. to set him up to the point where the only thing that mattered was that cricket team success yeah. in that moment, That's not the right. ongoing success, because you can argue that that particular moment has wiped out 12 to 18 months of Australian cricket Absolutely. Yeah. performance. Absolutely. Plus, the, the sad thing that I think for all the good things he's done and achieved and all the milestones and the That's you know it, accolades yeah. and everything else That's right. if he doesn't actually you know if he doesn't toe the line and you know play to that level that's for right. the rest of his career, yeah. that's what he will be remembered for. Yeah, there's and one guy. He will always right. be remembered for that. And I think incident. no matter how good he goes, he'll be remembered for that. Because exactly. as Aussie, we always remember, we don't remember how good you go, we remember the shitty thing you do. And if he goes really well, do the questions come up, yeah, is yeah. he doing something to... T- you know what oh, I mean? It's that well, questioning yes, again yes. of, do, is he repeating... Mm. The, he can't be good at on his own merit anymore. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's that constant, yeah. oh, I wonder if, I wonder if. Cheating. Yeah. Perhaps. I mean, Australians are pretty forgiving of their sporting superstars. Yeah. I mean, you use Barry yeah. Hall as an example. Like, you want to you put ball tampering yeah. versus King hitting a bloke oh, on a footy field yeah, when he's right. unsuspecting. Oh. Barry Hall's had a... Not only did he have a successful back end to his career, he was then given opportunities in the media... Um, Brad uh, Fittler. The, the funny oh, way. Well, well, Brad Fittler hasn't had a squeaky clean record, has he? Oh, I'm sure I tell you, Andrew Johns is an Oh, no, that's what I'm thinking. Andrew Johns. Sorry, Andrew Johns has a pretty bad record. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Andrew, if you're yeah, sorry. So we got sorry, some, we, Brad Fittler. We, we, we do have some Gary Jacks and different footballers that have come on. Um, where I was going with the Steve Smith one, man, was that if it's okay to, for Steve Smith to walk past it, what I'm going to say is when you went there is that it what was his priority in the moment and his priority was winning more than upholding a value set and that's yeah, what i was thinking sure. yeah. Yeah. yeah and so there was more important to win than, correct yeah and where does that come from that doesn't come from him that comes from someone else like his ceo right so where i was going was that culture is driven from the top you know and those values are driven from the top yeah, and a fish rots at the head it's... yeah they start at the top, they change from the bottom. In saying that, okay, because yeah. I was actually going to ask this, um, your opinion of this. Yeah. When you're when you're in a team or group environment, okay, yeah. whether it's work environment or a football team or a sporting team, yeah. your own personal, and you know, you've yes. been talking about this lately, yeah, Israel. Right. Yeah, so. Oh, Israel for now. So the. It's a $10 million lawsuit. Let's talk about that. So, and this is what, when you have your own personal values yep. and beliefs and opinions yep. and. And, and you are in a situation with a team or work yeah. where that doesn't sit, their values and beliefs don't sit with yeah. the team yeah. values and beliefs. It's time to go. And that's my question to you. Do you walk away graciously and say, I'm sorry, but I know that what I believe in doesn't um, you know, fit, fit in with, the, with yeah. the culture of this team and this sport and pretty much most Can of the I, country, you know, looking at the backlash from what he... But he's wait. still standing up to... What, and good on him. And good on yeah. him. Just hold on a sec. We've got Cara, Nigel Clements, Anthony Badiki, and we've got Will, Will Schroeder, a CEO, young, young Jacko, triathletes. triathletes. 
And Will Schroeder's a gun triathlete too. Yes. Uh, the, um, Iron Man. Luke triathlete. Rice, Vanessa, Matthew. We yeah, all on. Now, let's go there, bro. Let's yeah, go. Come let's, on. let's bring on. Let's well, bring on is, Israel. Uh, this is good. You and I are not going to agree on no, this. No, we're not. We're not. And, we and that's okay. We don't, we don't have to agree. to agree. As long as we all get the chance to. We don't have to agree. Well, actually, I'm going to agree. And this anyway. is disclaimer oh, that's again. That's why I'm going to go first. <laughs> you go for this. I'm, right. I don't. So here's the thing. Full powder, Israel Flower. Full powder, Anthony Monday. Full powder, Craig, Chris McCormack. Okay? So Mac is a rat bag in triathlon. He's like the Anthony Monday. He says the shit. Are you or... saying for standing up Absolutely, for what they believe for in? Beliefs. Okay, yep. Full, and full their values, power to yeah. I, I totally support um, Israel Folau's stand. Good, good on him. What I don't support is that it misaligns with his business's values. Now, if it misaligns with his business's values, he has no, and I'm going to be really blunt and direct, he has no right to air that in the media because it affects his business. His business is paying him more, was it? Was it 10 million? I don't know, million, but well, he should be sued for 10, so right. I assume so that that's the residual of his contract or right. something like that. So it's a $10 million thing, right? Now, that lawsuit had the potential to actually cripple, to cripple Australian rugby. Yeah, what gives? Here's my thing. Israel, <clears> here, so let's have a look at this. Australian Rugby Union has given him a platform to reach however many people because he has a talent and good on him. So what gives him the right to use that platform to then violate the values of his business in the media and potentially cripple his business because he has this belief system? Good on you for putting it out there, not while you're playing for the ARU if it doesn't align with the ARU value system. He's got a contract. He knows what their values are. They've been up in before. It's, and I, I just... I just, if you if he was working for me, see you later, bro. You know, you don't go out. Don't, well, you're wearing my shirt on your on your chest. You know, well, well, you've got our logo on here. You've got to espouse the values of the business that you're working for. We'll go and work somewhere else. Do you agree with that? Uh, I agree with the part that um, he didn't have a that he is effectively, in my opinion anyway, um, made any further relationship with the ARU very, very difficult. Mm. Um, where, I, where I disagree, though, is about his, uh, about his right to use a social media platform to express an opinion that is so contrary to our overall mm. societal standards. Mm. Um, and particularly given some of the challenges that the um, various religious groups are having in Australia and globally at the moment um, to spe specifically tick on drunks and homosexuals, mm. I, I found quite unpalatable. Mm. Um, the, there, was a, um, there was a really interesting follow-up to it if we're talking um, for the sportsman, and that was the, the Gary Ablett, uh, one of the best mm. players in the AFL, he liked the Instagram post. Mm. And he came out afterwards and he... Um, he put a really well considered tweet, I think it was a tweet or an Instagram post, mm. uh, basically saying, you know, I, I've always respected the fact mm. that Israel Folau is prepared to speak his mind and he puts his Absolutely. faith above everything else. Absolutely. And I, I respect the courage to be able to do that. For sure. Um, and then but what Gary followed up with was, look, you know, it, it was not in good taste and I love all people and I'm, I, I can't remember exactly, but I'm after tolerance in society mm. and you know, there's no place for bigotry and hatred mm. and that was probably the thing that i really struggled with a little bit with the israel falau scenario it wasn't that it was um it wasn't that he was espousing a religious view per se mm. it was actually quite the way i interpreted quite a hateful mm. approach to it mm. and if he was to have come out and said something along the lines of you know, the bible talks to everybody being a sinner Everybody has their own set of vices and everybody is a sinner. Mm. And the only way to achieve um, perfection in heaven, heaven is to repent for your sins and to accept Jesus Christ. Mm. I don't think the ARU no. would have had any problem with it. I agree. Yeah. I, I'm with you, bro. But, but that's their value system. But it was, a, but it was the it was very specific, specific and targeted. pointed right. target targeted towards some minorities in... And, and people who have largely not had acceptance for a long okay. period of time. Absolutely. You know, I'm a 32-year-old I'm a white male. I'm, mm. I'm never going to know what prejudice is. Mm. 
and for for somebody who's in such a position of influence mm-hmm. to, to do it, I, no, I I found personally quite repulsive. Yeah, me too. Um, and I mean, I like you said, the way he said it was, you yeah. know, that was very. No, much. And because the Bible, also, in. the Bible also says, "Don't mark your body with tattoos." It definitely says which that. Is Hello. Which is interesting. Hello. Right? Which yeah. is interesting. So I, I struggled with his integrity, but uh, I actually like him more now than I did before. Good on you. Fair play to him. You like him more or respect him more? I probably respect his... him more because he's willing to put a four million dollar contract on the line. He, you know what? He didn't realise that, but, and which spins me out. How naive is this guy to not think that? This is going to cost him his job. But they've already warned him 12 or 18 months ago. I mean, who, kn- who knows how much effort he actually put in before the tweet to find out whether or not he'd have a legal case if he yeah. was to be sacked or See, wh- whether or not he was guided into it by uh, religious leaders. Who knows? But yeah. And I mean, you know, when you're in a, at any position of, you know, being well known and, and people being appreciating respected. your opinion and yeah. things like that, yeah. um, I think that. You do need to be careful yeah. um, with your personal opinions Absolutely. because it can affect your business and it can okay. affect people around you. You know, and my parents have always said I've I've got my own political beliefs, for mm. example, and um, I and I'm not someone who goes for a particular party. I judge people mm. on their merit and what the party's offering, and mm. so I do a lot of research, as mm. you know. Absolutely. But, um, I certainly don't go around, you know, spruiking my opinion on yeah, right. the parties or who I'm going to vote for or posting stuff on social media. We were both really careful about that. Well, we much. were, and I have, I have the, um, I have enough respect for you know, people making their own decisions Absolutely. to know that we we offered the information. That's it. And then people went into a polling uh, to a, a polling. polling booth and they voted. That's right. Um, and I don't think I should be up handing out how to vote cards for the party I want to vote for, no, right. only because you know I, I do actually respect the fact that we live we've in a democracy. A, we've all got a right of choice. And speaking about Israel being so vocal, and was it not a huge shock that the Liberal Party got back in? Oh, like absolutely. nationally, it was Abs- a, a shock. It absolutely. was not expected that it was going to be that sort of result. That's right. So a lot of people have their own opinions and values, and obviously don't. Share them. Promote them and That's share them. Right. Otherwise, it would have been more obvious That's right. what well, the result was going to be. And this bloke's a future politician, so I'm going to get your... <laughs> we spoke about... At four hey, four, boss. At, yeah. at, <laughs> sorry. Oh, shit. oh, no. Sorry, mate. I should mention that, should I? Um, oh, we spoke about it at like 4 30 the next morning on, on the... On, we train a lot together. Um, just very, very quickly with the Israel flower thing, what I really want to... This is what I want young kids to take out of this. It's simple. It's a very simple message. And everyone in, actually who's listening to this, your actions have an outcome. Consequences. New, uh, consequences. Mr. Newton, one of his laws, every action has a equal and opposite reaction. Yeah. And I don't I don't mind what you do as long as you understand that there are consequences. There are consequences to your behaviour. And you need to be prepared to own the shit out of those consequences, consequences where he's not. It's like this is another thing, like we talked Lance before. You know that Lance, like every other cyclist, kept saying, I didn't do drugs, I didn't do drugs, I didn't do drugs, till, they, till someone had to really just slap him around and say, mate, you did drugs. Remember a very famous president of the United States that said, I, I did s- not have sexual relationships <laughs> with that, that woman. Yeah. And, and How many times did you say that? And what I love about oh, no. the drugs in sport is Tyler Hamilton was the first guy and he, I love Tyler. Read his book. He, he sort of really outed everyone. He was the first guy to get busted. And he said, I did the drugs. <laughs> you got me. Okay, Jan. <laughs> and by the way, here's what everyone else is doing. As well. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was quite cool. Melissa Odell, Richard Johnson and Michael Burns. Um, the funny part about that, though, hmm. is... For me, anyway, yeah. how long Lance got away with it? Because everybody knew, like everybody in the know knew, everybody who had previously been caught and disqualified as a result were with him doing it, and somehow he managed to just get, get that under the carpet. What were they waiting for him to own up or something? I don't know. what he was going to do, right? Wow, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a couple of famous runners that have had gold oh, medals. Absolutely. Like it's happened in at the Olympics absolutely. for years, and yeah. and Australia is not the first ben country Johnson. to be caught ball tampering. Mm. Why not? Mm. So and, and it's, it's happened, happened subsequently, and it will continue yeah. to happen yeah. because you know people and 
what I find mm. unreal is that stuff may have happened in the past, but it probably happens more now when they've got cameras yeah, on, and, yeah. Yeah. you know, they've got heat monitors and movement there, right? monitors. <laughs> yeah, everything. So it's not like you're not going to get yeah, caught. Right. Exactly. It was funny. We did an MCG tour, which is really cool. And the dude there was, G'day, my L, how are you, love? Um, the, uh, the dude there said, you will not get away with anything in the study. They said, we've got enough cameras on you that we can read the paper in your lap when you're in Bay 24, wow. wherever. They said the cameras are that good, they can read what you're reading. And I'm like, Ironically, a lot of, most people missed mm. the shoe getting stolen in the orange know, the other night crazy? until, yeah, until a video crazy. came out. So, yeah, which I thought was yeah. very crazy. Ian so, Powell, how are you, bro? One of Australia, one of Queensland's most important electrical inspectors. Safety first. He's an electrician who's now going around inspecting stuff, making sure we're safe. So I've got a question. Okay. okay. Since you two are the values oh, and Tristo is. Gu gurus. Oh, I've got a full bladder. I, yeah, I, you go. I'm going to ask I'm going to ask a question because yeah. you obviously have a lot of people who you manage and who are you're responsible for. How if how do you identify if someone is being vocal about their own personal values and you it is affecting your team and you can see how do you address that with somebody do you do you pull them aside and and say hey we've heard that you have been you know um bigotry comments or racist comments or um so it's a good question i think i've been very fortunate across my working life that um, i haven't had too many uh, occasions where that's happened and th there's two ways of tackling it and I think they're both both different and both important um, and the first comes to the point we we're talking about before which is around the standard you walk past the standard you accept if somebody does or says something that is really out of line with the way you perceive the values and your personal values you, you've got no option other than to stop and say something in the moment. Um, and that, that can be quite confronting at times, uh, particularly if it's something that's um, a little bit um, you know, important to you personally, for example. The, the second one is when something is said and you know, typically people are a little bit more careful of what they say around somebody like me than, yeah. um, than they would be. And if something is said when you're not present, um, and then I think that comes to a question of style and process. So um, depending on the, the severity of what he's done or what he's said uh, will determine the, the way that you handle it. Um, my personal style is to usually try and tackle it by a one-on-one -on -one question. But again, if you one-on-one -on -one conversation. But again, if you have a um, if you have an event that is uh, extremely serious, you don't have a choice but to to tackle it. And that, I imagine that for you that would be extremely difficult given There's your three your employees, close, <laughs> three employees close personal very relationship. Hard. Just asking Tristan, what um, when you see someone stepping outside the values of your team, how do you address that? Yes. Um, and I guess the the next thing is if you if you as a good leader instill the values throughout the whole team, whether it's you know three people working for you or yeah. or hundred, if you instill, do you? feel like the culture will mean that they will personally pull each other up if someone steps outside the values. That's not acceptable. We don't talk about women like that. We don't talk about, you, you know, I mean, obviously that would be your goal is that within your mm. team, mm. it wouldn't even get as far as you, um, unless it got bad, obviously, you, yeah. you, but they would be pulling each other up that's and saying question. that's not. So, so what I would hope is that and, I know, and I'll, I'll just be honest, I know that in life this is almost always not true, but I always got told that a good reflection on a culture is whether or not people talk to each other in the same way when they're in the same room or differently to when they're away. So true, yeah. And I, I would hope that people largely act the same way in front of me as what they do um, behind my back. A, a really interesting extension um, to the question is around the conversation of the way offence is taken versus meant. Um, and so where I have come across problems is where people have said something in it, almost potentially like what Israel Falad did. I don't know whether it's whether he had um, intent, intent behind it or was. not. But where 
people make a statement or a joke or something like that that has a sensitivity associated with it that they don't perceive themselves yeah. but There's then but then somebody in the room does or uh, somebody who overhears it Gets does offended. and now that's where that's where things can become really yeah. complicated and tricky because yeah. it's actually not a, no longer a question of values it's a question of education mm. um, because yeah, that's the, well the, the person because perception can really screw things up yeah. especially in writing if that, that's oh, why i hate texts shit, and emails yeah. you know when you text or email and yeah. there's no tone of voice and there's no hand movements yeah. and there's no eye to eye contact or body yeah. language very easy yes. to well, and if if someone's grammar's not great and the commas yeah. are in the wrong place and yeah. things can be perceived yeah. really incorrectly. really incorrectly and that and that could yeah like potentially that. harm and, and you, you then the throw people. in uh, language barriers so i speak spanish but yeah. um when i was living in latin america the uh, the graduate program it's called jovenes talentos which means young talent but if you put the spaces in the words when you write it differently, uh, it, you can put uh, joven esta lentos, which means uh, young people are slow. Oh, see? <laughs> and so I'd only ever heard it um, heard it said. And then I was like, well, Try I know that there's a word joven and I know that there's so lento. You put them together and so that's how I wrote it in an email. Uh, and geez, didn't stuff go yeah, uh, pretty uncomfortably wrong quickly. Mm. And there's a lot of there's a lot of um, memes in that where you, you they change the comma as to where, oh, where the comma is in the statement. And it's, and change it around. Yeah. Well, I've been married to a teacher because she usually corrects Red pen, so, yeah, she I gives you all the... God love her. Thanks, yes. baby. I appreciate yes. all that help you give me with my English and my grammar. Me and Zach are going out. I've told you this joke, haven't I? I say to Jules, me and Zach are going out. And she'll say, Zach and I. Oh, Zach oh, and I. I. And I'll say, oh, are you going out with your <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Yes. Have, you, um, have, you, have you given Jules the correction around that, though? Because the, the way to work it out is not, it's always not Zach and I. Right. You need to be able to remove the other person from the sentence. Yes. And then the then the sentence needs to make sense. Yeah, okay. So, um, Anton and I are going to the pool. Right. I am going to the pool. Yeah. Um, would you like to go to the pool with Anton and I? Would you like to, would you go, like to go to the pool, pool with, with I? I? Oh, no. With I. Okay, that, that, so that, that doesn't, doesn't make sense. Oh. So would you so like to come to the Anton. Anton with Anton and me? Oh, oh there, you there you go. go. There you go. So go keep and that one up your sleeve not, and deliberately work something. She's going to slap you. <laughs> <Yeah>. She will. <laughs> You're going to forget that oh, and no. you'll be gone. Hang on. Oh, yeah. She'll oh. probably come after me. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's, all on, it's all on video. Hey, hey, Ian. Hey, while we're talking about that, just a quick one. Um, you asked a great question, Roz, which is quite insightful. Do If a leader leads by behaviour, will the team self-manage mm -hmm. right, and self Correct. To have better to, to well, they feel they're, they're, they're keeping an eye on each that's other right, and, and making sure the that star. they're meeting the values on that level rather than that's right. the leader having to keep an eye on it all the time. Yeah, I'm going to just use my experience as a speaker. Um, like I have very few shitty sessions. Occasionally, if I have a shitty session, I know that I've got rapport with most of the group if they self-manage. So there'll be someone with a real left field, like an Israel Folau type viewpoint. And it's, there'll be someone in the room that says, "Mate, go on. pull your head in. Get pull your head in. Yeah, get your shit together." So I think that's probably in my space where people self-manage. Um, but I think that takes a bit of time to set up, and you've got to have you've got to have a fairly strong behavioural history and credibility with the team before you'll get to that point. So leaders have got to do a fair bit of work themselves and, and demonstrate those behaviours before the team will self-manage? Would that be a fair call? Like it takes time to set that up? Yeah, I mean, you, you can say as much as you want. Correct. That's it. it that, that's really easy. It's really easy to put a PowerPoint together. It's really easy to say this is what's important. Mm. And then something doesn't happen and you mm. act in a, or something happens or you are put under pressure mm. and your actions are in contradiction to everything that you've mm. said, your, your credibility is gone and it's clear it that happens. what it is you've said is not important. That's right. So absolutely, it takes time. One of the um, one of the things though, I think, uh, and if people who are working for me listen to this. Um, <laughs> they won't, they won't see this. We don't, we don't reach many yeah, people. It, <laughs> the, You're in big the trouble. That, um, the thing that I'd say is that everybody's entitled to make a mistake. 
and my God, I make more than most. Love that statement. And, yeah. And so just, and so my qualification on what I just said would be that the, uh, whilst it's important to make sure that your actions and your words are consistent, um, people make mistakes just because you've got uh, the word superintendent, manager, senior manager, general manager in your title does not mean that you're perfect. And the, the I guess the difference is that under most circumstances, those people spend some time being quite critical in their reflection to allow them to make sure that the next time when they've actually contemplated the way they acted in those circumstances is different. Nice. Well and, said, well and, and then if you've got a that sort of constantly evolving leadership, you can actually see a, a change over time. And people will say, well, they acted this way last time. Yeah, but that's interesting. Same thing happened and then they acted like this. I wonder why that is. So um, you know, that's the thing that I respect most yeah. about. Uh, strong leaders will self-reflect. Yeah, well, th these weren't even necessarily strong leaders. Okay. These were uh, these were people who I thought um, just had the ability to get the most out of me. And mm. I think that's a really good reflection on a leader. Mm. So mm. Um, it wasn't that that person was particularly powerful or mm. didn't have a commanding presence or anything like that, but was really able to get the most out of me yeah. because I could see that in different circumstances, they adjusted the way they were based on the fact that they'd learned. And that's a great. See, this is the way that I sort of see a role like yours, Tristan. Like, in my business, I've got four or five sets of eyes on looking for behavioural guidance. You've got 86 eyes on you. So that comes with a level of responsibility. If you want to change hearts and minds, you do it through congruent words and actions. You use the word consistent. What we talk about is being congruent. When, yes. you, when you do what you say you're going to do. So this is important to me, and guess what? I'll demonstrate that with this behaviour. And I just think, what's your take on, you know, a GM's got 150 people, 200 or 600 or, you know, 1,000. Plenty of places in town have 1,000. That's right. Yeah. So to me, Sorry. So, no, you're right. I'm just, That's all right. Uh, playing footsies. We're trying to and Tristan keeps trying it's to get freedom. away from me. That's right. I keep moving <laughs> keep in trying, keep moving chilly. Chilly. Um, So I just I just see people in senior roles just have this um, this responsibility, I guess, to the challenge is in your role that you step out of line and people notice it, I suppose, where I'm going to be blunt. Yep. They'll as soon as you do something that contradicts what you said you're gonna do, people will like it instantaneously. And they don't forget that easily. And the challenge is that for every, let's say, for every shitty act, it takes five good acts to, to actually undo that. Um, so what I liked about what you just said then is that you noticed when your leader changed his behaviour or her behaviour. Um, it was actually a shame. Uh, there you go. Oh, I've got to tell you, the best leaders I've ever had have been females. Sure. Um, I, I just don't know why lead, females make great leaders. Um, so I just, what's your take on that, mate? That yeah, you've got 86 sets of eyes on you, and you sort of take that responsibility seriously, and I'm sure you do. Yeah, of course I do. The, mm. So I've, I've been doing some reflecting on um, two parts of my style. Mm. Uh, the first is that everything's going well. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm in my comfort zone. Yeah. How do I act and how do I portray? Okay. Okay. Trying to trying to work out who I am in that space. Yeah, yeah, um, but the, the more interesting part and the more uh, challenging part to fix is your defensive style. And mm. you're, you're put under mm. pressure, you have to respond quickly. Mm. Who are you? And there there have been a couple of occasions um, mm. across my working life where I've got that really wrong. Yeah. And God, do people remember. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And more importantly, in that moment, even if they don't remember, what is the impact of that on the rest of the group? Yeah, that's so, exactly right. So as, as the leader, if you're clearly panicked and you're clearly stressing and you're, for want of a better term, losing control yeah. of the situation by losing control of your emotions or losing control of the process that you're following, yeah. What does that do to everyone else? Everyone else goes into chaos. So or, or you all of a sudden find uh, everybody trying to do the right thing 
but pulling each other apart. Well, that's that, so true. This is such a big discussion. We need another three hours on this. There's um, there, there was a, a sp- speaking to yeah. a guy. Dags. Oh, Darren, Darren Braithwaite. He, oh, and Mark um, West, Mudge. Moving on to a new venture. He's just yeah, where's finished he going? Up, finished up with the APDL last night. Yeah, I'm not sure doing? if I'm allowed to say, Dave, and, but best of luck with Carl, that. What? Oh, Carl, Carl, hey, Carl. And Carl, And David Bruton, and Julie's cousin. David and Mark that's, West. That's, uh, that's Julie's uh, Sorry, mate. Sorry, just have to say yeah, that. Dave's got a career change. And he's been a great CEO for the APDL. Yeah, he has. For the APDL, yes. And they had a big game. Huru, he's one of his favourites. What is it? He goes, Huru. Huru. That was on the oh, Observer right. headline oh, today hooroo. when they announced he was leaving. Oh, and he's, he's like, hooroo. hooroo. He always, the old, old Australian goodbye. It's like, hooroo. hooroo. Yes. Right, hooroo then, bro. Um, I'll look forward to um, yeah, hearing what you are up to next. Yeah. Um, and, can I ask another question on that? I've oh, got what, an, and I would if I forget, another so one. you go. Well, I, what I was going to say, because we've spoken about culture um, as far as the way people speak about one another and, you know, racism and things like that. How important do you think it is to share your goals and targets with your group? Because I believe as far as um, part of your culture, if you have something you want to achieve as a team, and we spoke about the team Mm. the other day that you you had worked with that got the awards and everything. That's right. So how important is it to share your company's targets and goals? And do you think that drives a lot of people if your culture is right Uh, to achieve? So my approach on this might be a little bit different to to some. So we like different. We We do. We like different. So absolutely. trying to make sure that everybody understands what's important and why it's important um, and why. It is critical. I mean, why, yeah. so I remember I, I was fortunate that I got a, a really fantastic developmental opportunity very early on in my career. And I read a report with, um, with this senior leader and he got to the end and he said, what do you think of that? And my head's spinning, right? I've been reading graphs, I've been reading tables. There's, 30 pages and we just sat in this room in silence for two hours trying to, drive, really? to digest wow. it out. He said, so what did you think? He said, well, you know, that number on that page really stood out to me. He said, yeah, but wasn't that a really good representation of the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Oh. So all it was was a bunch of data, oh, but there was no... There was no point. Like, yeah, there, there was no, well, this is, this is what this data is telling us. It was just here's a bunch of data, it's green or it's red, you go work it out. Wow. And so the, the why and the story that goes with it, I think is so probably just as important as, mm. as the what. Mm. Um, and the the approach that I try and take, and this is something that I'm personally working on, is trying to set that framework in such a way that it's actually tangible to people. Mm. Now, um, if you're working for, um, I don't know, let's, let's pick an example, Qantas, Qantas, given that we're um, given we're talking about the Wallabies, um, if you're working for Qantas and you're a, um, a steward or a pilot, um, does the end of the year profit for Qantas really matter to you on a day to day basis? Probably not. That's why I asked the question. Yeah, yeah. Probably not. That's why I asked the question. Um, that sounds like my car. Oh, God. Someone's um, knocking it off. I'll yeah. be back. Yeah. So yeah. So, so d- does does that well, mean I'm to say no? I, 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 it's not your car. I, I think so too. I don't think that matters. What but, would matter to them? Though? It's what, a white so, SUV. So that's where going? I was going. So what probably matters? Look, sorry, my car's not being stolen. What are you doing online, Matt? Yeah, that's right. Oh, never, go hey, back Matt. to work. He's one of my friends. Rebecca Scarborough, Peter, Peter Crane, Peter all the way from Bruce Vegas. Uh, but what what, 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 what would Christo. matter to them in that circumstance is potentially the reliability of the aircraft. Oh, how many fa- how many failures are being detected um, as part of their preventative maintenance program? What's the um, I don't know what what's the accuracy of the departure times or yeah. those kind of things that they have the ability to influence and control, which also drive the, the business outcome. And so trying to get the, a balance of well, the business is aiming for here, mm. but this is how you are able to support that, I think, is 
look, the person who works that out and gets it right is going to have a very successful business. And I think somebody like Richard Branson probably yes. has, has, has got that right. And you can see that in the, in the success that they've had. So, and he's big on the reward, isn't he? Richard Branson oh, is, yes, you know, if we good. reach our targets and, you know, he will go to the people right at the bottom That's who it. are, you know, the whatever baggage, yeah. you know what I mean? Like That's as far it. as, as his contact, he's big on that. He is very big on reward. So is there is there merit in rewarding your team for reaching targets as a company? Uh, so I'm not a financially motivated person myself. So uh, difficult for me to answer that question, I think. So what about Remember, other things uh, like yeah, golf days like, or, like breakfast, or um, you know, a big Christmas, breakfast. extra big Christmas party? Yeah. Or, you know, like, the, do you think there are people that are... Motivated Look, there, by there's no doubt that people are motivated. Urella, by Urella, by Urella, yeah. being Urella yeah. rewards. Yeah. So yeah, there, there's no doubt well. that that's. Um, there's no doubt that people respond well to that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm yet to see meet somebody who, if you give them a little bit more, is going to be displeased. Oh, of course, um, of course. I mean, the, I guess the challenge, right, is to work out if what your motivation for doing it is. Yeah. Is is your motivation to drive a business outcome? Is the motivation to keep people more so satisfied point. Or, or to get praise and recognition or to get a promotion because i believe if you give too much all the time yeah. without an expectation. it does and and they figure well i don't have to work harder because they're going to give right. it to me anyway do you know yeah. what i mean and so one of the failures, one of the challenges i see for leaders that are very giving and very praising is that they praise standard acceptable three out of five level behavior yes yeah, so say, it's oh, or, and there's a, a, a really interesting uh, sub point to that, where you reward the behaviour because the effort was good, despite the fact that it's a reflection of a series of poor things. So an example would be you've got an engineer whose responsibility it is to develop an asset strategy for a piece of equipment. They've been promising to do it, they don't do it, and then it breaks. But then that engineer is able to stay there and helps and fixes it until 10.30 at night. Okay. Do you say thanks? Yeah, absolutely. Why? No, because he didn't. Interesting. Now That's discuss. Right, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. I, I you would say. should have say, put something in place for well, it to not break in the first place because that should, was his job. That's right. I think you've got to reward. And I think you've got to really he's staying back. See, he's, see, he's staying back till 10.30 to fix it because he's shitting bricks that he's going to lose his job because okay, he didn't do it in the first and place. And I'm okay with that if you're specific in what you're rewarding. I really appreciate you staying back tonight. But you and should have fixed it in the first place. No, but, no, but. <laughs> by the way, don't have one. Yeah, right. exactly. And why do you think we got it? So the two, to me, that's two separate discussions. I don't yeah. know, is it or is it the one discussion? What do so, you think? so I think that there, there's a lot of backpedaling in that I, I scenario. I think they're really linked. That's um, why he's staying till ten thirty. I'm telling you, because yeah, yeah, like, he knows he did the wrong thing. To think of. <laughs> so I can tell you that ninety nine percent of the time, when I stay back till uh, nine or ten o'clock at night, I do all the time. I know the person who's at fault. And it's the person who looks at me when I stand in front of the mirror. So, the oh, for yeah, me accountability, isn't it? big accountability. For me, the power in the recognition piece. If we're talking about reward and recognition, the power in it is not just appreciating effort. And I think it's really important to do that. So, in that particular case, I would, I yeah. would 100% say thank you. I really yeah, appreciate. appreciate the you effort that you've back. put in. And I would, personally, I'd leave it there. That's right. The challenge, though, is what do you do next time? Yeah, that's right. So when the same thing happens yeah. and the same people's able, same person's able to hang back and to fix everything because they're fantastic at firefighting but hasn't actually learnt from the last time, do you say thank you that time? That's right. And what happens if they don't do something that causes an accident or an injury? Yes. If they're not, you know what I mean? That's they're where I sort of so go. I, I get it. I so get I think it. it's, it's a really a interesting discussion. debate. Great discussion. And I mean, I would probably say thank you for staying mm. back, but we need to catch up and look yeah, at why that right. wasn't done in it's the first different. place. It's two different it discussions. It is two different, yeah. Because yeah, 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 it's, it's, it's actually a really good growth opportunity and we call it learning discussion for that learning discussion for that individual that champ the business won't tolerate that again right? this is serious stuff you just cost us however many million dollars worth of downtime and it leads me to another question that that carries on from my last question mm. regarding um you know the people um that work with you or for you um committing to your goals and targets mm. because how often do you talk to someone who's in a crew at an industry and there's always that one guy on the team who's the slacker oh, and he, he's always 
yeah, he's not he's not putting up the same effort as other people. Mm. And I talk to a lot of people in the industry, and there's always the you know they come home and they whinge to their wives yeah. or whatever about the fact that I'm um, sick to death of that guy. He's not pulling his weight. He's not. So it lets the crew down, and there's that you know. They're obviously not motivated. They're motivated by a paycheck. Mm. You know, they are the ones that are turning up. They're not motivated by that team. I'm going to make sure I keep, you know, the team um, you know, propped up and help them and do the same level of work. And I'm not going to have the longer lunch break. And so, do you? How do you deal with that within a team environment when you have people, you know, who obviously no, aren't that, that's working to the same? That's level an opportunity. As the other people in the team. Robust conversation. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, robust conversations is one. Um, my preference, though, is to actually work on the team as a collective. And you can, say, if you were to draw a bell curve. make a good consultant. Oh, yeah, yeah hell yes. Yep, yep, yep. If, if you were to draw a bell curve of the population, you've got. 10% of the people who are those slackers. Yeah. You've got 10% of the people who are knocking oh, it out of the park. Yeah. And then you've got the people in the middle who are generally doing a pretty damn good job. Um, and But again, are not necessarily pushing to the right or pushing to the left. I have good days and bad days. Yeah, and, and yeah. everybody has the swings and roundabouts and their ups and downs. But you don't really need to put a hell of a lot of effort into the people yeah. on the right. It's so motivated. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But if you put a lot things. of effort into that middle bracket and you shift that middle bracket and all of a sudden instead of, I don't know, you've got 10 people in the team, you have one yeah, person is, who's the bottom is. and you've got one person who's at the top. You've now got three people in that top. You've got six people in the bottom. And now, gee, doesn't that bloke really feel it's uncomfortable? Stand. He'd stand out. Isn't yeah. he uncomfortable? Or she? Um, he, he, yeah. I'm assuming that assuming it'll be a heat because guys are far more lazy than women <laughs> on, overall. But, um, you know, that that That's guy is now really in a really good. uncomfortable really position. Good. So if you, if you put the effort into that group, you're not only directing your effort towards the majority of the people, you're now creating an environment where people want to lift themselves up. And the, I got some advice at one point that was you will when you become a, a really good leader, you will learn to get satisfaction out of the successes of your team rather than your own individual success. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I and, like that. And for me, that's how I try and approach it. I mean, fortunately, I don't have particularly so, much of that. So let me ask you this, Tristan. Like you're an evolved, I'm going to call you an evolved leader. I'm going to call you an evolved leader now. Um, for the non-evolved leader, in a word, left or right, which end do you think people put their most time into? The non-evolved leader. For sure, the left. They, sure. go, they go to the poor performers. It's not until you evolve enough, until you realise that, how much a difference that makes, that you can actually be at that level. Because it actually takes a whole lot more courage as a leader to focus on the good people not the shitty ones. Because you know the, the whole door that squeaks a lot, squeaks the most oil? That's what usually happens. And it takes some courage as a leader to actually say, you know what, bro? You're on your own chair. If you carry on like that, wait, I'm going to focus on the good people who are doing a better job. I think if you focus on that bottom 2%, you mm. can leave a lot of the others that have the potential to move up to that, you know, that higher bracket. Awesome. Of, and, and you, yeah, can... They don't feel as valued, or That's they right. have you know doing the work on the on them that um, will boost them to the next level, and you know you get more potential out of them. That's right, sort of stuff. Too lot. We need him back. We need yeah, all. Yeah, it's all been all wonderful. People. But it's an hour. We got heaps of people. We're Peter, going to the Rebecca movies tonight. And can I quickly just wrap up no, one you can't. Just no, we're yes, closing. You can. You can. You can. Of course. Um, we started out talking about what my life, had, how my life had changed as a father. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, one, to all the mums out there, you're doing a fantastic job. Um, Lovely thing to say. And very true. The, the thing that I've learned most about being a dad is uh, I can bench press more than a car, but with that single exception, she is far stronger than I am or can ever be. And I get that. Yeah. The, the second thing is to any of you who are struggling as a new parent for whatever reason. Mum or dad. Mum or dad. Come and see Tristan. It's okay. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to 
not have the expectations that you'd set for yourself and your family experience early on, not for them to not be met, please reach out to people. There is not a single person I've, I've spoken to saying, hey, this is not working out the way I planned, who's done anything other than show me love and care, and I guarantee it'll be the same for you. Great advice. If, um, Great you, know, advice. if you can't find that person, uh, there are plenty of resources out there. Um, the internet's full of them. But if push Call comes us. to shove, uh, send me a message on, on Facebook. There's, there's, there's plenty three of people, people who are there. There's three people here. here. Definitely, and that's really great advice. And for, for mums and dad, like you said, oh, there, there's a lot of um, lot of help out there, and um, we certainly have all been through it as parents. Mm. We're at the other end. end of the scale. Thank God. We, <laughs> <laughs> we still have struggles, but I'm oh, telling no. you now, um, different struggles. Now. Yeah, now totally different. We, we, we don't related. sleep at night for other reasons. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> when they're in their twenties, oh, um, it's the most rewarding experience. It is. Oh, it's yes, a wonderful it thing to say. It's easy and to experience. Oh, it is not. Oh, it's, it's not, and it doesn't get any easier. It's let me tell you. It's like so, a tattoo. Anyone that tells really, you tattoos don't hurt. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, especially, especially when you get them in odd places, oh, hey, Anton. No, absolutely. All right, Tony. Thank you for joining us. Now, Being next week is my last Christa. live in Gladstone for a while. Love um, you, love thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you. You're a Ross. really good dad. Mm. He's a really thank good you. Guy, yeah, he is a good guy. And you know what? Very insightful. You've been amazing Hasn't today. Been and I'd nice, love to. Yeah. Love, love we'd to love to have you back. Definitely. There we go. See our winter sky. We're getting a little bit dark. It's getting darker earlier, and it's cold. So. Everyone have an awesome week. Have That's a great it. weekend. It's my birthday oh, on oh, Sunday. Yes, very yes, very yes, much. Are, you, are you 40 yet? Very much. I'm not quite 40. 40 yet. Soon, <laughs> I'm soon, a liar. Soon. <laughs> I'm All proudly, right. proudly 48 proudly 40. on Sunday. Are you? Yes, oh, I'm you're proudly 48 age. on Sunday. So oh, thanks for joining us, guys, and have a fabulous weekend. Stay safe, Woo! and we will see you here next Friday.